All right, let's set up our next part of the Kismet sequence. Now, what we're going to be doing is building a light switch. It's kind of like a, a rite of passage when you're learning Kismet. I think everybody kind of makes you learn a light switch for starters. And what we're going to do is toggle an actual light actor to activate a light and deactivate it, turn it on and off. But we're also going to manipulate a material. And I want to talk about that for just a second. What we have here is a static mesh of a fluorescent tube. If I right click on it and come over to find and content browser, you'll see that this is SLT light SM fluorescent 01B. Now I want to show you how we're going to uh, basically control the material that is on this static mesh. I'm not going to walk you through the actual process of creating it right here on camera, uh, not actually doing it step by step, but I'll give you enough of an overview that you should be able to recreate it on your end. If you double click the static mesh and step down into its LOD info, you can expand it all the way down and see the material that is applied, which is MLT Light SM Fluorescent 01. You can either search for that in the content browser or click on the Find Object in Content Browser button. And here's the material that's applied. Now I'm going to close out the static mesh editor in the background. Here's something cool about that material. If you double click it to open it up in the material editor, you're going to notice that it has a parameter applied to the light bulb's actual color. The cool thing about parameters is that you can access them through a material instance constant and thereby change the color of the light. So all I did, and this is all handled uh, beforehand during the setup process, I created a brand new package. In fact, here, watch this real quick. I'll just create a brand new one real, real quick. We'll come down and choose New Material Instance Constant, and we can give this any name. We'll just call this Temp, because I'm going to delete it anyway. And we get the window popping up back here. It's asking for a parent material. Now, the parent material is going to be that material which was applied to our static mesh. So let me slide this out of the way. All We, get, we have to find that again, so I'm going to right-click, choose Finding Content Browser for the static mesh. I'll expand the static mesh again and just grab this guy, though it probably would have been faster if I'd copy-pasted that name. So here's the material. With that selected here inside the content browser, I'm just going to come, up, come back over to my material instance constant, and next to the parent, I'm going to click the little green arrow. So now we're using that as a parent material. Down here at the bottom, you'll see vector parameter values. There's our light color. There's that parameter I just pointed out to you. Check this expand its colors, and for now, just switch the light off by setting all these colors to zero, and there you go. You've just created an off version of the light. The cool thing is that this parameter can be talked to within Kismet to set it to any value you want. We could, if we wanted to, set the reds up to three, and we just made a red fluorescent light. I'm going to close that out. Now, really, all that was done outside of setting that up that was special is you have to apply that to this static mesh, which is really as easy as just dragging it from the content browser right on top of that static mesh, which is all that was done here. Now, let me go ahead and delete out that temporary material instance constant. I just wanted to bring that up in case you wanted to set something similar up on your end and maybe didn't have this level open. At least you'll know how to, uh, to take care of that. However, in this video, all we're going to worry about is actually setting up the light actor. So this is actually going to turn the lights on and off. To do this, we need a very special actor called a point light toggleable. It's just like a regular point light, which you can already see a couple copies of here in the level, but a toggleable, as its name suggests, can be switched on and off. Now to get to these, we need the Actor Classes Browser. I'm going to go to View, Browser Windows, and choose Actor Classes. Now if we expand Light, you'll see Point Light. And underneath Point Light, we expand that, and you're going to see Point Light Toggleable. Choose that, close out the Actor Classes Browser. I'm going to right-click here on the wall, and choose Add Point Light Toggleable here. We'll slide this out from the wall, kind of keep it right in front of that fluorescent tube. Now I'm going to change a few aspects of this light just for setup purposes. Let's press F4. I'll expand light, expand point light component. Now let's change the radius down to say, oh, I don't know, maybe 512, even that maybe a little bit small. Let's try 650. Uh, make sure I have my focus in here. 650. 
That's pretty good. So we'll go with that. Now I'm also going to change the color. So let's close up point light component, expand light component, expand light color. And we're going to leave this primarily blue. So I'm going to pull green down to, say, I don't know, about 200 just for, just for a test. And then for red, let's try 175. So it's primarily a blue light that's coming out of there. Now, the last thing we need to do is underneath light component, make sure we switch off enabled. That means that by default, this light is going to be, well, not on. It's going to be completely off. We're going to use Kismet to turn it on and off. Now, to do that, this is the trigger that we're going to use. Now, this, this is not necessarily a trigger in the sense of something that is going to talk to Kismet. This is just a static mesh. It's just here so that the player sees something with which they can interact because by default, you can't see a trigger. Now let's add a trigger in that we can kind of hide behind the scenes. I'm just going to right click, choose add actor and click add trigger. Now me personally, I think that trigger is huge and it's kind of in my way. I mean, now that might be just fine. Technically speaking, I could still work around that, but if you ever find yourself wanting to shrink one of these down, all you need to do is come down to your draw scale fields here at the bottom of the screen in the console bar. Take your first field, and by default this is set to 1 or 100% scale. Let's pull this down to like 0.3 and press enter. At first you will notice no change, which will startle and frighten you. But if you then click on the icon, it will then update, and you can kind of keep that tucked down. So it's just a little bit easier to keep an eye on what's going on to me if I shrink this down. Though if you have a hard time seeing it after doing that, you may want to, you know, scale it back up. Just n make sure you realize that every time you change this, you're going to have to click on the icon to see an update. All right, I'm going to leave mine fairly small. Now, with this trigger selected, I'm going to immediately jump into Kismet. Make sure I click the open Unreal Kismet button. And let's just slide this little network out of the way. Now, navigating this window, you might have already figured it out. It's so easy. It's just like navigating the orthographic views. Drag with the left mouse button or the right mouse button, and you can move objects around. If you drag with left and right together, you're zooming in and out. Now, I'm going to take what we have already that's opening the door, and I'm going to slide it completely off the screen. It's just gone. Now, I'm going to right-click, choose New Event using Trigger 1, and this will be a used event. That means we actually want the player to walk up and hit the E key. Like the, like the character inside the game is going to go up and you know flick the switch with their finger or something. Now, there's a few settings that we need to be aware of. I already talked about max trigger count. We'll go ahead and leave that uh, set to 1 for just a moment. We'll come back and switch it to 0. Here's another one I'm just going to point out that we're not going to change for just for the moment. This is aim to interact. This means that the player will have to be looking directly at this trigger for our effect to take place. That's going to be a little bit of a pain later on, but again, for now, I'll just leave it. Now, we need some way to toggle our light on and off. This is one of those things where it's probably going to be a good idea for you to take some time and grab your new action list and just take a look at the types of actions available or start reading about them on UDN because you have a lot of actions and it can be a little hard to keep track. But in this case, we know we want to toggle something and there's a toggle submenu. So all we're going to do is grab a basic toggle. Now let's take a look at his inputs for just a moment. We have turn on as an input, turn off, toggle, which will turn on, then off, then on, then off. We have a target object, so this is the object that will be turned on and off. We have a boolean and we have an event that we can start or stop using this, or basically activate or deactivate. Now really all we're interested in is the target. So what I'm going to do is take our used output and drag a wire out, and we're going to plug that into toggle. That means the first time we use this switch, we could turn the light on. If we use the switch again, it will just do the inverse. It'll turn it off and, and so on and so forth. Now, we just need some way to talk to our light actor. Let me close Kismet for just a moment. Don't worry, it'll save your place. So closing it's no problem at all. I'm going to reach up here and grab our light actor. I'm going to jump back into Kismet. And I'm going to right click here in open space and choose new variable. A variable is how you're going to pass data 
into a sequence object. Variables can hold all kinds of stuff. They can hold integer numbers, which is just a counting number. They can hold float values, which are numbers that have decimal places. They can hold Boolean values, true and false. They can hold strings, if you have something you want to type out. They can hold vector information, like RGB or X, Y, and Z data, and all sorts of other things as well. They can, there's uh, matinee data variables, which actually contain all of your keyframes for an animation. Uh, there are even external variables. There are named variables, which are kind of like radio control variables. We'll talk about those later. There are object variables, which is something we're about to use. And there's even player variables. If you want to do something directly to the player, this is the variable you need to, to create. If you pass the player variable into a sequence object, you're talking to the player. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click and notice one of the options that pops up because I have a point light toggleable selected is new object var or variable using point light toggleable zero. Click on that, and there we go. So there is an object variable. It already contains our point light toggleable. So now all I have to do is take our little target input, drag a wire right on top, and notice that they're color-coded. We have a magenta input, and an object variable is going to be magenta. Now just to give you a quick heads up on how that works, if I come into new variable and I choose a boolean, booleans are red. If I come back under new variable and choose an integer, and let's just grab a, a regular integer, you'll notice they're cyan. If I grab a string, for example, strings are green. So this color coding will become more important as you get deeper into stuff. Now I'll just go ahead and nuke those out. Now, you just saw me create an object variable using whatever happened to be selected and then connect that in. Let me show you a shortcut real quick. If you put your mouse right over the target input and then right-click, you can choose new object var using point light toggleable zero. It comes in and it's already connected. Now, I want to talk just for a moment. You just saw me delete out a node. That was done just by selecting the, uh, the variable and hitting the delete key. It was really that easy, and I can add it back in real quickly. Let's talk about moving these around. As you create more and more complex networks, positioning these sequence objects is going to become critical. You can move these guys around by selecting them, holding down the control key, and dragging like so. And you'll notice those wires stay nice and connected the whole time. So we can position these however we want to. You can also make multiple selections by holding down control. So you can move them all at once. Or if you hold down control and alt together, you can drag out a marquee selection box. So it's just a few of the, the selection methods to make your life a little easier. So I'll keep these nice and kind of tucked together. This is already a simple Kismet sequence that will turn our light on and off. Let's go ahead and test it out. I'll jump into my level. And here we are. Let's run up and the gate opens. And here's our switch. And it's, you know, okay, there. It just came on. It's kind of subtle. In fact, you're almost expecting that bulb to lighten up. And it's a little weird when it doesn't. But we're having a little bit of a problem because if you if you notice, and it may be a little hard to actually translate in the video, it's almost hard to know exactly where you should be looking. And that's where I was discussing earlier that this aim to interact is going to become a little bit of a pain for us. So I'm going to switch this off. This means we do not have to be looking directly at the trigger. We just have to be within that trigger's radius. By default, that radius is pretty small, which will be perfect. The player needs to be standing pretty much right on top of the switch. But I'm sure you've gone into rooms and you've just kind of casually you know, reached over and switched on the light switch while you were looking at something else. By switching off aim to interact, we can do the same thing. We can look up at the light and actually see it switch on and off. So now let's try this again. Actually, before we leave, uh, let's jump back into Kismet. I'm going to select my use trigger again. We're going to grab our max trigger count and set that to zero. So now we can use this trigger as many times as we want. Let's jump back into the level. And you'll notice my lighting needs to be rebuilt. I'll probably take care of that before the next video. So now I can hit the button over and over, and you'll see the light is actually switching on and off. That light is fairly dim. You know, just for the purposes of example, I'm going to brighten it up. So let's select this guy, expand light, light component. Uh, let's grab its light component, and we'll set brightness up to, I don't know, 2.5. And then if you want to test it right here, we can just switch enabled on for a moment and see how bright that really is. That's better. We'll go ahead and go with that. So we'll disable it, close the properties window, test out one more time. And boom, there you go. 
So we've got a light bulb, which is switching on and off. Next, we need to deal with our material, but I'm going to take care of that in the next video. For now, go ahead and save your level, and if you need to rebuild your lighting, do that too, because I'm going to have mine rebuilt when we get back. So that'll wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go.